Kim Olufemi Zadia Biamila. God bless you all. Members of this joint committee will not spare anything in order to trace the circumstances that led to this ugly incident. Kujay jailbreak again in focus as lawmakers step up investigations. How to commit all MDAs to the patronizing uh, NIPO. And lawmakers urge MDAs to patronize NIPO. A warm welcome to yet another interesting package of house tickets. A weekly program that educates you on the workings of the legislature with focus on the House of Representatives, Federal Republic of Nigeria. My name is Dihelia Mamza, your regular guide on the program. A number of committees have been busy discharging their legislative duties even while the recess lasts. One of them is the House Committee on National Security and Intelligence, which vowed to unravel the mystery surrounding the Kuje jailbreak by suspected terrorists. Still on the program, the House Committee on Finance continued its sittings, and just like we promised you last week, we shall bring you a continuation of the meetings between the committee and MDAs. This is in addition to the reports from the other committee on subsidy regime, which sat during the week, inviting various MDAs to provide the committee with some vital information. Details of all this come in your way after this short timeout. Please stay tuned. The entire purpose of the legislative agenda is to direct our legislative resources and efforts in a coordinated effort to ensure the well-being of the individual in a life of safety and freedom. That is a high ambition, but it's well worth the effort. We have passed landmark legislation to fix our oil and gas industry, reform the police, and reorganize the corporate administration system in our country. We have considered and passed meaningful legislation that impacts all areas of our national life. Thanks for staying tuned. The House of Representatives has vowed to unearth the circumstances that led to the July 5th Kuje jailbreak by suspected Islamic State for West African Province, ISWAP. Chairman of the House Committee on National Security and Intelligence, Representative Shaban Sharada, stated this at the resumed investigative hearing on the terrorist attack on Nigerian Correctional Center, Kuje, in Abuja. It will be recalled that the House of Representatives had on July 21st, 2022, set up a joint committee on national security and intelligence and other security related committees to investigate the causes and effects of the Kuji attack. Representative Sharada, who is the lead chairman of the joint committee, assured the public that members of the joint committee will not spare anyone in the security breach. I would like to assure you that members of this joint committee will not spare anything in order to trace the circumstances that led to this ugly incident while deliberate effort would be made by us to ascertain the current security situation within and around the facility. Measures put in place to safeguard the recurrence around the facility and other similar facilities around the country. We would also ensure the monitoring of measures put in place to protect lives and properties of residents in the FCT and those of all Nigerians. The Minister of Interior said that the attack on the Kuje Correctional Facilities was carried out by a good number of the terrorists. He added that the security challenges currently ravaging the country were inherited by the current administration. Partially all the security challenges we have are inherited. None was born, that is, none was caused or created by this administration. The Kuje attack that precipitated the jailbreak 
was cannot be isolated from the general insecurity we have in Nigeria. Of the security personnel stationed in, in Kuji to protect the facility on the day of the invasion, where 31 military personnel of the Nigerian Army, five personnel of Mopu 21, five personnel of Mopu 50, two personnel of counter-terrorism unit of the Nigeria Police, two personnel of Kujie Police Division, seven personnel of Nigeria Immigration Service, 30 personnel of Nigeria Security and Civil Defense Corps, 10 personnel of Correctional Arms Corps. These 65 people were there for specific responsibility of resisting and preventing any attack. And they were all armed. Because of the presence of the uh, pressmen here, I will not tell you the grade of arsonists in their possession. Meanwhile, the committee has re-invited the security chiefs and other heads of security agencies, including some ministers who failed to honor its earlier invitation. I don't know why we should invite security chiefs for the third time and they cannot send representatives or to come in person, even to communicate through, the, through letter that they will not be around. Especially army. I'm very, very angry with the army because they were part of the people that were in duty that very day. We have a very serious security challenges in the country. So it may not necessarily be possible to have all service chiefs in one room. Please let us also take note of that. Uh, I am not saying, especially when the move of the motion was particular about army. I don't want us to be particular about any institution here because uh, this is a joint committee and that is why there's a joint issues at hand. In another committee room, the Finance Committee of the House continued its meetings with ministries, departments and agencies over the 2023 to 2025 medium-term expenditure framework and fiscal strategy paper as it perused income from revenue-generating agencies. For details of its sittings, let's take our next report as compiled and presented from our studio. Page 16. In one of its sittings last week, the House Committee on Finance had calls to direct the Office of the Accountant General of the Federation and Fiscal Regulatory Commission, FRC, to sit with the Nigerian Electricity Regulatory Commission, NERC, and reconcile its 2021 accounts. The Deputy Chairman of the Committee, Representative Abdullahi Saeed, who gave the directive, frowned at the delay in the reconciliation, which he said is impeding funds from going into the Federation account. You know very well our, their position in terms of revenue. Uh, so we cannot afford to have money hanging somewhere when there are plenty needs for, for the funds. That, uh, on his part, the, October, the chairman of NERC, Mr. Sanusi Garba, said uh, that operating surplus of the commission in 2019 upon reconciliation uh, amounted to 3.755 billion naira in addition to a surplus balance of 900 million naira while the commission remitted 4.656 billion naira. Total due for remittance to REF in line with the enabling, enabling law of the commission was 4.656 billion. That we have actually paid and uh, on the next page is evidence that we have paid 4,656,613,355 to the Rural Electrification Fund in line with the provisions of the law establishing the Commission. Why don't they collate all the numbers and come back with their presentation so that that way we are not working blindly? Our Act says that the surplus funds will be determined by the auditor at the end of the audit. Now, usually what happens is that because of the delays we've had with the audit and the COVID, 
the 2020 accounts were ready mid this year. And we circulated that, and it was on that basis that the Accountant General Office called us for reconciliation. Now, our 2022 budget, we started the process much, much earlier. And we were able to appear before our, the Committee on Power and got our budget approved for 2022. Now, the audit for 2021, like the chairman said, is ongoing because we had to finish 2020 first and then we can now move into 2021. And what delayed it further, apart from the COVID, is the fact that Deloitte that has been auditing us for the past five years, their tenure ended and we had to engage a new uh, auditor, which is PwC. We cannot be waiting forever for them to, to do their work. You know, it shouldn't take them forever to do the work. So please, let's talk to them. I, I want to believe that uh, they have the wherewithal to do this exercise quickly. So let's get them to do it quickly so that uh, we'll come back home, do our reconciliation and remit what is due to uh, CRF so that um, a part of these challenges that we're having on funding, your commission will be will contributing in, 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 in providing solution to it. Yes, sir. My name is Dr. Adamabed. In a related development, the committee has demanded for the freezing of the account of the Federal Competition and Consumer Protection Commission. It also demanded the removal of the Commission's Director of Finance, DFA, for what it called gross misconduct. The chairman of the committee, Representative James Faleke, made the demand while grilling the Executive Commissioner Operations of the Commission, Dr. Ahmed Abdullahi, and the Commission's Director of Finance, Akin Yogon Ojo, during the committee's sitting on Tuesday, the 6th of September, 2022. He told the officers that all revenue-generating agencies are mandated by the Forward Rate Agreement, FRA 2007, to remit 100% of their internally generated revenues, IGR, annually to the government. Can you show us where you paid 100%? Show us your income on monthly basis and the remittances on monthly basis. 1,341,106,789.35. You remitted 1 billion yes, sir, out of 4 billion. billion. Out of 4 billion, sir. What happened to the remaining 3 billion? We use it as a running cost, sir. Sir? We use it as a running cost. According to the committee, it is illogical that while the federal government is set to borrow 11 trillion naira to fund the 2023 budget deficit, the agency had spent more than half of its IGR in the financial year in unapproved spending. Representative Faleke thus ruled that no funds should be withdrawn from the agency's account until the director of finance is removed or redeployed. How would the government fund the budget? You earned $4 billion and you spent $3 billion. We will not take it. Akata General, do you have the receipts for the $1 billion they remitted? 2021. You, saw, you have it. He therefore directed that the clerk of the committee's secretariat should write to the finance minister to freeze the remaining 530 million naira in the agency's operations account until the DFA is removed or deployed by the authorities. Months into the year, you are Members of the committee also expressed their displeasures. Can you tell Nigerians exactly what software? Are you buying on a yearly basis for 74 million and six months year to date, another 70 million? Can you please educate us? What kind of software are you buying? But last year, in the whole of the year, you spent 38 million naira on publicity and advertisement. But so far, in seven months, you spent over 142 million naira. The same thing, I think it applies to virtually all your overhead. We are talking about borrowing over 11 trillion for 2023 and then somebody is talking about financial autonomy you want to spend the little you want to be given the right to spend the money that should go to crf we shouldn't even get the little that is coming from you you are getting about three point something billion this year you are spending over two billion and you are still insisting that you want financial autonomy when we are borrowing over 11 trillion to fund 2023 budget. Does it make sense to you, sir? Still from the Committee on Finance, 
It met with the Postmaster General, Nigerian Postal Services, NIPOST, Dr. Adebayo Adeusi. This was on Wednesday, the 7th of September, 2022. Adeusi, while making a presentation, lamented that the agency's revenue has dwindled due to the COVID-19 outbreak, calling for an urgent intervention to save the service from winding up. He said in 2021, NIPOS generated 3.9 billion naira but could not remit anything to the government coffers, adding that a couple of products had been developed to advanced stages, assuring that when they become fully operational, the agency's revenue will improve. And what we have done since the year of revenue, based on, that, on the advice of the Universal Postal Union, is that we need to diversify away uh, because it's very clear now that we cannot remain sustainably, uh, 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 we cannot sustain ourselves just relying on movement of maize anymore. And we have, we have put a lot of structural strategies together. We have developed a number of, uh, of uh, new products and services that will take us there. Uh, most of those products and services are at the level of POC as we speak, proof of concept. And as soon as we get uh, all of that right, then we begin to, uh, uh, to push them into the, into the market space. And I can assure you that once we are able to achieve that, we will see that there will be uh, uh, an upward swing in our revenue as it is. Reacting, the deputy chairman of the committee, Representative Abdullahi Saeedu, said he was aware of the difficulties faced by NIPOST, but stated the position of the Finance Act 2020, which stipulates that partially funded agencies like NIPOST should pay 50% of their revenue into government coffers. He gave suggestions to the agency going forward. You, you're doing well in terms of your collaboration with NISAL, for instance. I think we should look at uh, the possibility of um, exploring some of these uh, low-hanging fruits uh, around us. I remember at a point you wanted to do something with FRS, but because of your issues, uh, it didn't go through. So I think it's, it's difficult, but we will discuss. We need to revisit some of those things so that uh, we'll put you on a proper, uh, on a proper footing. It's very, very important. Uh, I, what you wanted to do with FRS, I think it was something that is very good that will uh, impact positively on your revenue. Another angle that I, 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 we should be looking at is... Uh, how to commit all MDAs to be patronizing uh, NIPOS. It's very, very important. The committee also had the registrar of the National Business and Technical Examination Board, NAPTEP, Professor Mercy Ifeoma Abanihe, before it. In her presentation before the committee, she said that the board was in need of a bailout because compared to Waek and NECO, the number of candidates who sit for NAPTEP are very few and some state governments who sponsor candidates from their states are owing the agency. The registrar added that money's released to run the agency was barely enough for the board to mobilize and organize examinations annually. Since last year, 2021, the board has been under this 25% um, uh, 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 deduction from source from any money that enters our coffers. Okay, that's better. So this money, in fact, right now, I don't know I should be, whether I should be saying it because, you know, the examination money is not uh, now available to, to use to conduct the exam. So the board, I don't want to describe our situation. So this amount, like this year alone, these six months, uh, the amount that has been deducted is... Uh, I think we have the, it's almost like half of uh, what we have uh, generated. You would want to do something uh, different, something more, something that we bring more value to the board than what you made. So I, we're, we're giving you this uh, expo uh, on a pro bono basis, you know, encourage the state to, to establish more technical schools so that you have more students writing the exams. We actually... Uh, and there is, a, there is economics, of, economics of scale. The more students you have, yes. the lower your cost uh, uh, it becomes. There's a lot of expansion in that uh, direction. These other sub uh, uh, certificate for artisans. So that's uh, a good one for Nigeria, and we are skilling Nigerians and certifying them.
you are still on to house ticket coming your way on the parliamentary channel of the NTA. Away from the finance committee's activities, we shall now go to the House Special Adder Committee on Fuel Subsidy Regime to bring you first-hand information on what the committee has been up to. Let's get that report. I welcome you to today's investigative hearing. When the committee met with Sahara Energy DCC Limited, the company denied ever receiving the sum of 35 billion naira as petrol subsidy payment from the Nigerian National Petroleum Company Limited (NNPC) as contained in the corporation's recent submission on the matter. The managing director of Sahara Energy Resources Limited, Alex Cole, the Nigerian subsidiary that undertook the crude for PMS exchange arrangement with NNPC on behalf of the parent company, denied any such subsidy payment, adding that there was no evidence of the payment in its financial records. This committee is concerned about the role we play as a partner in the DSDP. Otherwise, we will have no business to do with any of your affiliates. You understand? So, the discrepancy here is, as we are talking to you, on the role you played in the DSDP arrangement, if you send any letter and you sign as managing director of your company, not the one we are talking about. Would the other take it as a mistake or maybe an organizational incapacity? Okay. Understand. You understand? Yes, sir. So that's why the question of your legal status, who are we dealing with? Who, who is Nigeria dealing with? We need to now know your statutory obligations to the country with regards to your participation in these transactions in this country without being registered in Nigeria. I will also find that out from the NMPC. With regards to the um, DSDP uh, scheme with NMPC, basically it's a value for value transaction whereby gasoline security, first and foremost, is guaranteed by the sale of crude oil for the same value of gasoline. Now, it became important in my own humble opinion and um, with the experience you've had in running it because you have a Nigerian gasoline price that is pegged as a pump price or subsidized price for the public. When international markets fluctuate as they have been doing in the recent past, you had the incidents in Russia, you had the, the crude oil price crash, um, I think 2015, thereabout, and even before that time. If you don't have a mechanism to peg the price, the commiserate fluctuation translates directly to the gasoline pump price. So you can have a situation where it is at par at 150 today, and tomorrow it is 350 or 400. Now, I believe that. The, the intention was to mitigate such huge variances. The committee chairman, Representative Ibrahim Aliu, however, noted that while the committee's mandate was to get to the root of the subsidy regime and recommend whether it should be continued or jettisoned and not to which hunt invited stakeholders, they in turn must be conscious of the consequences of lying under oath. This is where we draw the curtains for this week's edition of the program. Always remember to visit our social media handles showing on your screen to catch up with our previous programs. Let us do this again on the parliamentary channel of the NTA for more updates and activities of the House of Representatives. Until I come your way again, remember to stay safe. Bye for now.